I think there's a saying that goes better late than ever. In today's video, we're going to cover every Galaxy Note 10 Plus S Pen feature. Let's get started. Hey everybody, welcome to Tech with Brett, where I help tech work for you. So in today's video, I'm going to talk about so many features. So if you do have any questions, let me know in the comments below and I'll leave a timestamp to all of the different sections in the description below. Now to start off, I will be using the Note 10 Plus, but if you have a Note 20 or a Note 20 Ultra, all of the features will be the same. Um, your S Pen is just located on a different side. So let's jump right in. First, the S Pen is located on the bottom of your phone. Now, if you press in, it will pop out a tiny bit and then you can easily pull it out. So that is how you can remove the S Pen. Now, I don't know if you saw that, but here on the screen, automatically it went to a note. So this is actually called off-screen memo. So if I put my pen back in, my phone is now locked. So as long as your phone is on, so here we pull out the S Pen and instantly it jumps to off-screen memo. So this allows us to quickly jot down a note without having to open any application or even unlock our phone. So here we're going to uh, write notes and then let's say we want to change the color. Here I have options to adjust the color just to make it a little easier for me to read and I can adjust the size over here. So we can do one, then we can show you a few different sizes here too and then really big we have three. Now, one thing, you may run out of space if you're taking a lot of notes on here. You might run out of space and when you get to the bottom, um, you can't automatically scroll, but down here, you can click the arrows and that will jump up and down. Now, you also have the option to use your finger. So you can swipe down with your finger and it will scroll down the screen pretty easily. Now, another thing you can do is if you mess up, so right here, I messed up pretty bad. Um, you can come up here to the eraser, tap the eraser and erase. But if you're on the pen, and you mess up and you wanna erase that, all you have to do is hold down the button right here on the S Pen and you can erase it. So if you didn't see that, there is a button right here and all you need to do is when you are within 10 millimeters of the screen, you'll know you are because a little air view dot pops up there. So all you do is hold down that button, touch the screen and then you can erase by line. So here, if I have different lines, that's how I did the beginning, I just simply erase. So then I can get back to um, filling out my notes right there. And then now I can use my finger to scroll down and you can keep going through and making your notes. So we finished our notes. Now when you're done, you could easily select save or the other option is let's just say you put your S Pen back in and the note goes away and your phone is locked again. So let me show you where that note is located. Now, if we unlock our phone and head into the Samsung Notes application, this is where all of those are stored. So we open this up. Here you can see that I have my notes. There you can see the different sizes and I can scroll down. Now, one thing, it doesn't keep the same colors that you did on the off-screen memo. I don't know why, but uh, here you do have at least those notes stored and you could come in here and you can re-edit and adjust and use the full Samsung Notes application. Now, if your pen is out and your screen is locked and you want to open up the off-screen memo again, you just press the button and it will then pop up off-screen memo. If you had a note still sitting there, sometimes those will show up as well. So that is screen off memo. Next, let's talk about what happens when you pull out the S Pen while your screen is on. So here I'm gonna pull out the S Pen and here it instantly opened what's called Air Command. So Air Command allows you to quickly get to your favorite applications. Now by default, these uh, 10 applications or something similar are already here. And if you ever want to remove any of these, all you need to do is hold down and you can drag it up here to remove. Now I have an option to add a shortcut. So again, you only have a 10 app limit there. And then here you can see all the different shortcuts. So if I wanna remove more of these, I can select the minus. And then if I wanna add any of these, I just press it and it will come down here. Now I actually don't want to use the create note one. Um, I could use any of the apps that are on my phone to create a shortcut. So I could add the AR zone. Let's go ahead and do that. And then um, I'm done. So all I need to do is select back. And then if I wanna pull up Air Command, there are a few ways to do it. So if you can see right here, there's this little floating pencil. So I accidentally removed it. If you press the button, that will pop up Air Command. Let's hide Air Command again. There you can see my little button. So that just kind of hangs out on your screen. If you press that, you will then be able to pop up Air Command. You can also just hover over your pen, press the button, it will open Air Command. And that's really helpful, especially if you take this and you remove it, you press the button, 
it will then open that error command again. So that's really cool. Anytime you can quickly open up these different apps to use the S Pen functions. Now up here, it's saying that my S Pen currently has 100% battery life. So there's actually a capacitor built into here that will allow you to do certain functions that we'll get to in a little bit um, where there's a gyroscope built in here. You have a Bluetooth functions where you can scroll through your album or take pictures and all that. And if it ever goes down, all you need to do is put the S Pen back in it will rapidly charge it up in just a few seconds. You can pull it out and use it again, um, the Bluetooth features, I think for about 30 minutes um, without having to put it back in. And then down here are all the S Pen settings. So you can just select right there and it's gonna take you to every S Pen setting that is available. Now let's go through all of these different Air Command applications. Now, one of them that I removed was called Create Note. So instead of using it here, I have another way I like to get to the Create Note feature. All you have to do is hold down the button and tap the screen twice. So hold down, tap, tap, and you can tap anywhere on the screen and it pops up this um, little note. So we can write create note just like that. And we can then start writing our notes. And then up here you have a bunch of different options where um, this is using the Samsung Notes app. So all the features in Samsung Notes all right here. So up here you have this really cool feature where if you want this note to just kind of hang out on screen, you can kind of hide it so that you can then see the background. So let's see if I minimize this and I could be looking at something like an application in the background and I could then take notes still right here while I'm looking through the app in the background. So that's really cool. So I'm going to press that, brighten it up a little bit more. And then next we have, um, you can attach pictures, you can share it and you can do more options. So we'll talk more about S note in a bit, but that's how you can quickly create a note. Here I have the option to minimize it. So it shrinks it down right here, tap on it, opens it up. And then here I have the option to make it full screen. And then here, if I select the close, it will then close it. And if we go back into Samsung notes, head back to the main page, there you can see our note and it keeps the colors this time. So that's the create a note feature. Next, let's talk about coloring. So coloring um, is actually a part of the um, Samsung pen up application, but this is one of my kids favorite apps. When you open the coloring, you may need to sign in with your Samsung account, um, but it will then take you right to this coloring page. So let's say we want to color this bunny on a cloud. I'm going to select start coloring and then it takes me to this page where I can then zoom in with my fingers and I can color. So I'm not very good at staying in the lines. Um, so let's say we're going to make our moon blue and then down here you have a paint bucket. So right now it's gray. So if I try and draw, it's just going to draw like normal. But if I push the paint bucket, I can then tap and it fills in those options here. I can change my pen. So I like to use this paintbrush right here. And it's really cool if you hover over something, it will tell you what that is. So here, I'm not touching the screen, but it says this is the oil paintbrush. So I'm gonna tap on oil paintbrush. I'm gonna choose my color, and then I'm gonna choose one color. And then if you choose another, it actually kind of merges these colors together. So you can get a nice flow between the colors. And there is our little bunny. Pretty cool, select done. And then I say this is a draft. You could post it and let others see your work. And you can come down here and see what other people have done. Some pretty amazing art is here. Um, but there mine is, it's saved in the gallery now and I can go back and then I can color something else. So my kids absolutely love the coloring feature. Now, one other thing, if you're gonna use this with kids, um, I highly suggest that you go into the recent apps here, tap on it, select pin this app. And then here it says how to unpin it. And now the kids, if they try and hit home, they can't leave the application. So that's just a quick tip on using coloring in Air Command. The next Air Command feature I wanna talk about is Smart Select. So Smart Select is so cool. It lets you do so many different things like crop an image and even cut out objects. So if I select Smart Select, here I have the option to quickly cut out an image. And right here you can see a little square is popping up. Down here I could choose something else. So if I don't want a square, I could um, choose the little cloud where I can draw around an object. I could choose the uh, circle, I can create a GIF, or I could pin the image. So right now I'm just going to cut this out. So all I need to do is drag around it. And now it is going to crop that photo. I have the option to um, use the little magnet here, or I can simply just color on the screen. So 
we can just write on it whatever we want to write instead of having to take a screenshot then write on it. That's the fastest way to do that. You can't do that that fast unless you have the S Pen and then you have other controls there. So we're going to discard that. And here I'm going to choose an option called the magnet right here. And is what that did is it did its best to um, crop around the object that was on the screen. And then here I have the option to remove some of the crop or add the crop. So let's see, I'm going to remove that part of the crop, remove that part, and you could spend a while getting this to look perfect. But I would say that looks pretty good. So I'm going to select done. And then is what I can do is you can share this or just download it. So you could download it, but I'm going to share it and I'm going to add it to S note. So I'm going to select create a note right here. And now that little camera is in S note. And this is an editable. I wish it was editable editable. This is an editable object. So I can hold down, tap on it and then change the size. Now, one of the cool thing you can do with this is let's add a picture. So I'm going to add another image. I'm going to go into my gallery and let's say in my backyard, I'm going to add this picture that the wise cam took a picture of. So there I have it. I'm going to tap on my wise cam, select menu, and I'm going to select move forward and boom. I now have this little photoshopped image of the wise cam on top of my picture there. So there's a ton of different things that you could do there. You can take faces and put them on superheroes and you can do a lot of really fun Photoshop with that. And then you can easily select the menu here and save file as a picture and crop it and then send it wherever you want. Now let's take a look at the gift option in Air Command. So the first thing I need to do is go to something that I want to turn into a GIF. I want this video right here. So I'm gonna play the video and I'm going to go to the portion of the video that I want. And I'm going to step back just a little bit and pause it there. So now I'm going to open air command and I'm going to go to smart select and then I'm going to choose the GIF option right here or GIF, either one you choose GIF, GIF, the GIF, GIF. And I'm going to open that up and then here it created a box right around my video in the middle of the screen. Now here you do have some options to choose high quality or standard quality. Standard quality is better if you're going to send it over a text message, but we're going to choose high quality. And then if you wanted to, you could reposition this just by dragging that, or you could drag the corners and make it a little bit smaller. Um, but I like where it was right here to fill the full screen. So now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to play my video. And then as soon as I see where I want it to record, I'm going to hit record. Perfect. Just like that. And I'm going to stop. And so now it has created a GIF of this file. And so it's going to continuously repeat. And then down here, I have a few different options. Um, here I can draw right on the GIF. So I could write something like first diving board or something like that. And then I could keep playing it and it will show that on top as she continues to jump in. And then down here at the bottom, I have the option to share or I can download that GIF image. Now the last option in Smart Select is called Pin to Screen. So it's this option right here. So when we tap that, it then gives us the option to crop part of the picture on screen. So as what that does is it then hovers it up here on screen. So now I could go into my Samsung notes, create a note and draw this. And I have a reference image right there on screen the whole time. And then you can tap it, you can save to image, you can make full screen or you can close it. So next let's talk about live message. So live message allows you to easily create like a little Instagram story style uh, picture. So if we scroll through here, we have different options. We can use collection, which is stuff that I've already created. We can use our gallery. We could take a picture of us and write directly on it. Or here we can use color. So we can just use a color that's already preset. Let's go ahead and take our little bunny here that was in our gallery. So we need to go down here to pen up. Here you can see all the things that my kids have drawn. They absolutely love this. Um, we can take this right here and then we can put it right here, select done. It's a little hard to see all the settings here, but up here we have a brush. So you have these really fancy brushes. So let's choose this one right here. It's got some hearts. You can choose your color and then you can um, choose the size of your brush. And then here I can like color these clouds and now we have this really 
fun little thing on the clouds that you can use. Pretty fun. And then up here, you have an option to change it to a GIF or an MP4. So a GIF would just make it a little smaller and easier to send to people and it will repeat. So we're going to select that, select done. It is now saving that. And then this is what our finished product will look like. You can see where I draw and then you can see those hearts um, kind of floating around and making it a little moving picture. So that's really cool. And then we have the option right here once it's done to share. So then I could share it in texting or wherever to anyone that I want. So that is a live message. Next air command option is screen write. So screen write, all it does, once you tap that, it takes a screenshot and then you can quickly write on the screen. So this is nice if you ever wanna share some information, instead of taking a screenshot, then going in, cropping it, draw, clicking the draw button, as soon as you take a screenshot, crop it, you now have the option to write on it. So this just makes it so fast to do with air command. The next option is magnify. So this is a really useful feature. If you want to um, increase what is on the screen, some applications don't let you zoom in far enough or some things are just hard to read. So once uh, magnify is on, I can hover over and you can see it increases a little bit. But let's go ahead and bump up that size. So we can do 200%, so you can see that's a little bit more. Here we can bump all the way up to 300% and it really zooms in on the screen. So this is nice because then I can just tap. I know what I'm tapping on. I can go over and then I can swipe over and look more detailed information on all of these different pictures. And then when I'm ready to close this, all I need to do is click the X and it goes away. Now next we have an option called glance. So for glance, you first have to be in an application. So let's say I'm in Google Chrome and I want to look at something else real quick. So if I open up Air Command, press the button, go to Glance, well, Glance will go back to the home screen. So now I can go look up another app or whatever information I need to find. And then down here, you can see there's an app. Well, if you use the S Pen to hover over, it will then pop that up quickly. I can use and search through this. I move my S Pen and then it hides that application. So again, hover over, use the app, move, and it will hide. When you want to get rid of Glance, you bring this up to the remove icon and it goes away. Next, we have a feature called Write on Calendar. Now, years ago, and it's awesome to see they brought it back. So here, so once I select Write on Calendar, it's going to bring up the month view in my calendar. And now I have the option to write. So let's say this week, it was start school. So maybe you want to make quick notes without having to go into here. Um, so you can easily do that. And then you can change the color and you have a few different options here. You know, if you have like a date night coming up or something like that, you can easily make those notes. Once I'm done, I can select save. And now when I go into my calendar, you can see that I have made those notes there. In the calendar app, you also have the option to just select right there and you can change it. So if you want to change something, maybe you don't want that to be there anymore, you have the option to edit that. And then you have the option to grab the cloud. You can highlight something you wrote and you could move it. Maybe you had it in the wrong place. You can move it. You can move it to the front, to the back, delete it and all of that. So we're gonna select save and that is right on calendar. So the next feature here is Translate. So Translate allows you to use the S Pen to translate something. So up here we have the option to choose what language we want to translate into. So maybe I'm in a different country and I see a different language, I want to translate it into English. You can do that. Right now, let's say it's in English. I want to translate it to Spanish. So I'm just going to head to the web. I'm going to head to this article right here that I was reading earlier. And now if I see something and I want to translate it, I just hover over that and here it says what it's going to translate it into. Remotely. And then you can tap more and it will take you to more details. So pretty cool that you have the translate option there. And last here we have Bixby Vision. So Bixby Vision allows you to hover over things on screen and it will automatically try and find more information about that um, by searching the web. So here, let's hover over this where application. So here you have picture, text, or QR code. So this is a picture. So we're gonna tap the little picture icon, and then it's going to search that picture for something on the web. So here it searched Pinterest, and it can search a few different results. 
your mileage may vary on how that feature actually works, but it's nice to quickly scan a QR code and a few other things like that. So that's pretty much all the air command. There are a few more features like AR Doodle we're gonna talk about when we get to the camera. There is actually one more setting that you can use here in Air Command, and that is PenUp. So PenUp is actually its own application, but this is just a quick link to it. And PenUp is Samsung's social network for different art that has been created with the S Pen. So you can scroll through here and see different art. In here, you can um, follow different people and they will show up here. Here you have that coloring option um, that there is a quick link to get to that. And then here you have an option for live drawing. So what this does is live drawing allows you to see other people, um, how they created different art and you can actually follow along. So I just need to select learn to draw and then it's going to start drawing. You can see down here um, the progress of the video. You can pause and then you can also draw along with it. So I can make my own sketch there and I can come here and I can hide my sketch. So I can just see theirs or just see mine and then I can hide mine. So I can play a little bit more, watch when I need to draw next and then continue drawing. And up here you can change the colors and you have all of the different pen options as well. So that is how you can learn to draw with other drawings. So then if we want to add our own drawings here to the PenUp app, or if we wanna create a drawing, we go to home and we select the plus here and we have a few different options. Here with drafts, you can take uh, art that you've already started drawing and continue that. From gallery is you can pull something that you've drawn from your gallery. Maybe you're using a different drawing app. You could draw it in there and then export it to your gallery and upload it here. Then you have these two options, photo drawing or drawing. So photo drawing allows you to pull a photo from your gallery and draw on top of it, or you have drawing where you can just simply start drawing a picture. So let's go to photo drawing, and here you can take a picture with your phone or we can select from gallery. So let's go ahead and select this photo right here. You can choose what part of the photo you want to draw, and then you can adjust the opacity, so how much of that photo shines through. And then you have an option to create a sketch filter. So this kind of helps you see what a sketch of this photo would look like. And you can adjust the line color right now, but we'll leave it like that. And we can bring it here into PenUp and we can start tracing over it. And then down here at the bottom, we have the option to turn that on and off. So if I wanna start drawing and then I wanna see how my drawing looks, I can then simply hide that and then check back and forth um, how the drawing is going. And then if I want to adjust the sketch or anything, I can come over here to the bottom and I can then adjust how that looks. So maybe I don't want it to be a sketch anymore. We can adjust the contrast here. And so then if I want it to just be the normal picture, I can come here, select done. And now I can see the normal picture and draw right on there. And when I'm done, select done, and I can post it, choose a filter, or just save it in my drafts. Now, if you're really into drawing and you wanna try out some different applications, if you come up here to the menu and select apps for PenUp, here it shows you some other supported apps that you could use to draw and then share those within PenUp. So there's some integration there, lots more to check out here on drawing applications if you're looking for other drawing apps. So that's pretty much what you can do with PenUp. So next, we're gonna talk about the Samsung Notes app. And so this is where every note is going to be stored. So here in my notes, you can actually organize these and you can create hashtags and there's your trash and these will actually sync with your Samsung account. So go into the settings and there you can sync. And here you can see in the setting, there are a ton of other options that you can use. So we're not gonna talk about those today, but I wanna show you a few cool features. Um, first is you can add a PDF. So, so what that means is you can just take any PDF on your phone and then you can put it in here and save it for future use. Or you can actually click the edit button here and you can mark it up and take notes and edit right on the PDF, which is really cool. I'm glad that's a new feature in Samsung Notes. Next, if we select the plus down here to create a new note, here we can simply draw. Um, we have the option to change our pen down here so we can adjust the pen. And if you find a pen you really like, so I think I like that one, but I'm gonna make it not as thick. If I hit the star here, that's going to create a favorite pen. And then over here I can tap and it will show my favorite pens. So this is cool because you can just draw, but if you wanna change pens and you go away from your phone, you press the button and it will change the pen. So there I changed the pen, press the button again, change the pen. And you can see as I press the button, it will scroll through those pens 
and then I can keep drawing. So if you have like a few pens you wanna use, you can have up to a total of uh, nine it looks like. So you can also move these around and organize them any way you want. And then you can delete them if you want. So that makes it really cool to have the pen um, with that. Over here you have another style. So here we have a little highlighter and that can be added to your favorite pens as well. Here we have the eraser. So um, there are two ways to erase. Before, like I said, you can select the eraser and erase. And here it's erasing like a normal eraser. But if you tap, you can go to stroke eraser and then it's going to erase the individual strokes that I have created. And under the area eraser, again, you can change the size. So if you want it to erase bigger, you can do that. Here we have the selection mode where you can simply select and then move parts of your image around. Next, we have the straighten. So let's say we write something out. So let's say I write this down, but it's kind of crooked. So if I select the straighten button, it's gonna take the last thing I wrote and it's going to straighten it out. So there you can see it kind of aligned it more properly. And then here we have the option to convert to text. So if I want to convert that into text, I can tap that option and then here I have the text editor pop up and I can adjust that a little bit and convert and now it has converted that. Then on this bottom, if we swipe over, we have a few more options. There you have undo, redo. Here we have style change. So let's say I don't want these to be the style they are. I want them to be this bright green and then I can close that and I come in here and anything I tap will then except for text, will change to that style. Here I have the like handwriting zoom in option. So down here opens this big box where if you write in there, it will then show up there bigger. So if you want to write really small, you can go like this and I can write. And then you can see it will automatically move and so you can keep writing and you don't have to zoom in on the screen and move it around as much. You can do that all right within this box. You can jump to the next page and you can even move it around. And then the last option here is shape match. So here I can draw a shape and it will automatically change that shape. So you can see it automatically creates these circles. So you can make a house and make it look very impressive in a matter of seconds. So that's all the settings you have down here. Up here at the top, you have an option to change to reading mode. So instead of um, accidentally messing up your picture, now I'm in reading mode. So I can click and hold and nothing's gonna happen. But if I change it to edit mode, I can then touch on things, move them, add different items. I can draw and accidentally mess it up. So that's really nice to prevent you from making mistakes. Next, we have the option to attach items. So you can attach an image, a PDF, or a drawing, a voice recorder, audio file, text box. So if you're taking notes in class or whatever, this makes it super useful. If I want to select um, voice recording, you can then see that right here, it is now voice recording. So anything I say, it is going to record. When I select stop, here I can select that, and then I can, I can listen. I you can then see that right here, it is now voice recording. So, so you can listen back to that message. You could save, share, and uh, delete it if you want. So a lot of cool little settings there. And then here you have a ton of ways to save this. So you can share it with others. You can share as a file. You can sort it. You can choose a different page template. You can choose a background color. So instead of the black, you could have it be white or whatever you want. You could add this to a favorites. And then here you can create a tag and you can do finger drawing on. So maybe you don't wanna use your S Pen. Here you can then use your finger to draw. And then two fingers would scroll down the page or you can use the side right over here. So that is a quick look at how you use the Samsung Notes application. Now this is another option and when you can do, when you can use the Air View feature. So pretty versatile app. The only thing I'm waiting for is the Samsung Notes Windows app to be updated so these will sync across Windows and Android. I'll let you know when that has been updated. And so that is how you can use Samsung Notes, pretty versatile application. I think it's finally at the stage where S-Note used to be a long, long time ago. Next, let's talk about AirView. So I briefly mentioned this, but AirView is the feature where you hover over and it shows you a little dot on screen. 
Well, certain apps allow you to hover over and it will pop up more information. So let's head into the gallery here. And when I'm just viewing pictures like this, I can hover over and there you can see I have an option to quickly share or delete it without having to tap on the picture first. So here it's nice to see different information without having to open each um, individual video or picture. So here you can see on the video, it actually just starts playing so I can make sure it's the right video I want to tap on before I actually select it. So that's one thing you can do with AirView here in the gallery. Next, let me show you what that does if you pull down the notification tray. So here I can hover over this and it's going to tell me more about it. So Texo TV, he just uploaded a video and there is the full title. Um, here, if you see an email, you can hover over that and it will give you a little bit more information. So it really helps you see more that is on screen. AirView will also allow you to do certain things like scrolling on a page. So here in the messaging app, I can hover over and there you will see an arrow pop up and that allows me to scroll up or down. So there I'm already at the top. Here I can scroll down and here I can scroll up again. So that's one thing you can do with AirView. Now let me head into the calendar and here in the calendar, you can see my month view. If I hover over a day, it's then going to pop open that day and give me a bit more information without having to open and select the individual day. So now let's head into Samsung Notes. Now here you can see in this note, I have a phone number, an email address, an address. So here, if I hover over the number, you'll see a little phone icon appear. If I tap on the phone, it's gonna take me right to contacts and I can call that. Now just double check, make sure sometimes the numbers do get off. Um, so make sure that your writing is clear and it can understand it a lot better. Now here when I hover over an email address, it will then take me right to email. Now if that option is not pulling up, it's because you do need to save the note and then you'll be able to see that. So let's try this. So here I have an address that doesn't work. Um, oh look, it looks like you can also do a website. So it didn't get this first part, um, techwithbrett.com, but you would take you directly to the website. So that is another thing that you can do with Air Command. Now next, let's talk about just some more basic functions of the S Pen. Now let's say I'm here in a text message and I want to write out my message instead of using the keyboard. Well, if you tap up here in the menu, you have the three dots, I can tap there and I have handwriting. Um, let's actually tap and I can move this up to one of my favorites. So now with handwriting, that allows me to quickly write out a message and it will convert it to text. Say hello, how are you? So you can easily use your handwriting and do that. And then you get some other options where you can uh, make it smaller or bigger there. You can do some punctuation and then you can jump to other keyboards as well. Now there's a lot more to it, but that's pretty much it. Now, one thing I wanna talk about here is when you hover over with the air view, there you can see that it's showing text. So what that means is if you hold down the button, you can then quickly drag over that and select it all at one time. You can cut, copy, paste, and do all of that. Now that comes in handy when there's an application that doesn't support you um, copying, pasting just within the operating system of the phone. So let me show you. So here in Instagram, let's say I wanna highlight something. Like here I have my website, but it's not a link. I can't really highlight it. But if I take my S Pen and I hold down, you'll see the little um, pen cursor pop up. And then I can highlight techwithbrett.com and then I can copy, share, select, and translate. So you have a few options there that you can use all with the S Pen um, on certain applications that support it. There are certain ones that won't, but it's really nice that you can quickly highlight stuff like that. Now, another way you can use that is here in the gallery, I can hold down the button and drag and I can select a bunch of pictures at once. So then I can drag down a bit more and hold down, drag, select all those. So it makes it really easy to select. And it looks like if you go down to the very bottom, it will just keep dragging. And I can now select all of those and delete them or whatever you wanna do with those images. So that's another cool feature that you can use with the S Pen. Now let's dive a little deeper into some of the other special features you can do. So first let's open Air Command and we're gonna select the settings right here. So in the S Pen settings, we have a ton of different options. Now, if you don't want to get to it through there, you can go into the phone settings and then you can go down here and go to advanced features 
and then you can go to S Pen. So that is where you get to this menu. Now, first we have Air Actions. So Air Actions is a totally new way um, that was introduced on the Note 9, but now you have a few more that you can use with the S Pen. So the first one here is you can hold down the button to open an application. So here you can come in and you could choose one of those special S Pen features, or you can choose any of the applications you have on your phone. So for demo purposes, let's choose the camera. So I've already shown you what happens if you hold down your S Pen button close to the screen and double tap or select things. But if you are away from your screen, so more than 10 millimeters, and you hold down the button, now it will do whatever the air action is. So here it is set to open the camera. So it open the camera just like it should. But then inside each application, you have different app actions. So the hold down is just for one app, but then here you have app actions. So if we tap on the camera, here you can see different things. So then if I press the S Pen button, it will then simply take a picture or record a video. Here, if I double press, it will switch the cameras and then you have all of the gesture options down here. So I can hold down the button and swipe up and it will then switch cameras. Hold the button, swipe down. It will then change to the other camera. I can swipe this way, next mode, this way, previous mode, and then I can zoom in and zoom out. And so you can do this all from a distance as long as the S Pen can reach your phone. So let's go ahead, try that out. So I'm gonna hold down the button, open the camera. If I wanna take a picture, I can press the button once, snaps a photo. If I want to switch cameras, I can double press. There you can see it switched the cameras. So you kind of swipe up in air, swipe down left or right. It's not like flat like this. So if I try flat, I guess that works too. So here we can swipe down. If I wanna change modes, I can swipe, I can hold and swipe over and it will go to the other mode. So here when I wanna swipe the other way, so there I can jump between the different modes. Swipe up, let's go to the front screen here. So there we can change cameras and we can quickly swipe to our mode that we want to. Now, if we want to zoom in, we hold the button and we do this little circle thing. Oh, there we go, zoom out. And now let's zoom in. And if at any time you're not sure what app actions are supported in the app, if you tap the air command here, up at the top, you can see those actions. Now, if you want to adjust those, we're gonna head back into the settings and we're gonna go to air actions and right here under the camera, you can actually tap on these and you can adjust. So you could say next mode, previous mode, zoom in, zoom out, or do nothing. So you have total control of what those app actions are on supported applications. So here are other supported apps. So here we have PowerPoint where you could press the button and it will scroll through your PowerPoint presentation. Looks like we have voice recorder where when you press once it's gonna record, when you double press it does nothing or you could have it pause. So really you only need the one, one press is record, double press is pause. So lots of applications that support that. I do wish there are a few more but that's a good start. And then down here you have general control. So this is really handy. If you are just opening the camera application, you can quickly take a picture. Or if you're listening to music, you can press the button to pause, double press to go to next track, and you can change the volume and previous track um, all right with the air actions, even though that application is not supported. So lots of cool things you can do with gesture controls. So let's head back here into the S Pen settings and next we have S Pen Unlock. So what this allows you to do is unlock your phone with your S Pen. So you can select don't use or you can use. So after you've pulled out the S Pen and your screen locks, you can just press the button and it will unlock it. So this isn't as secure, but it is convenient. Like let's say if you're taking notes, so let's say you lock your phone and then you press the S Pen button it unlocks your phone without you having to put in your pin code. So not as secure, but once you put your S Pen in, if it's locked and somebody pulls it out, it's not going to work. So that's only if your phone locks while your S Pen is out. Next, we have screen off memo. So you have the option to turn that off. Here you have air view. So I kind of talked about this already where you can see calendar events. You can hover over your albums. You can scroll down on the screen and here you can see previews um, on web pages and other items like that. Next we have show pointer. So if you don't want that pointer to show up, 
you can check it and the pointer is gone. I kind of like having it there so I know where my pen is when I'm going to press it down. Next, you have multiple S pens. So let's say you want to use a different S pen with your phone, or maybe you have a tablet that has an S pen like the Tab S7 or my Tab S3 I have here. You can actually use that pen if allow multiple S pens are on. So the S pens actually use a Wacom technology so they interact with any screen that supports that and the Note does. So here I can use this. It has a button where I can then press and it will load up. So all the S pens are pretty similar. So this allows you to use multiple S pens or here I have this Stedler Digital where I can use it as well. One of the problems with this is there's no button. So if you just like a more full size pencil to draw with, you can use something like this. If you turn that off and you have an S pen inside the phone, then you are not able to use any of these other S pens. But if you turn that on, then now you can use those S pens. So it does take a little bit more battery um, on your phone, but it's nice that you can use multiple S pens. Now next is the Air Command shortcuts. So we've already gone over this. Here are how you can change all the shortcuts and here are some of those other shortcut options. Here we have show floating icons. So this little icon right here, you can simply turn it off just like that. I like to have it so it's always accessible. And then here you have open air command with S Pen button. So if you didn't want um, the button to open air command, so here if you turn that off, when you just press the button once, it does nothing. Turn it on, press the button, it pulls up air command. Next you have S Pen removal. So when you remove the S Pen, what happens? Here we have it set to open air command. You could have it set to create a note or you could have it set to do nothing. Maybe every time you pull it out, air command pops up, you don't wanna use that. You could select do nothing and nothing happens. Here we have proximity alert. So what proximity alert is, it will automatically notify you if you leave your S Pen behind. So as how this works is let's say you leave your S Pen somewhere. So this works by movement of your phone when it's locked. Now, if you do lose your S Pen, you can come in here and see when it was actually taken out. So you might be able to retrace your steps. But let's say you lock your phone and then you walk away. Right there, it popped up a notice after about 10 to 15 steps, and it says, remember to attach your S Pen if you have finished using it. So select got it, oh no, I lost my pen. Oh wait, I found it right here. And then I can lock my phone and I found it, and so I can put it back in. So that's actually a feature I've used quite a bit. I leave my pen out accidentally, walk away, I get the notice, and then I know to go and find my pen. So next we have sound. So play sound when you insert, or remove the S Pen or write on the screen. So sometimes when you write on the screen, it does these little scratchy sounds, you can turn that off here and then you have vibration. So vibrate your phone when you insert or remove the S Pen. So that option is right there. Now one last S Pen setting is in the display settings and under the navigation bar. So here you have the option to use the navigation buttons or the full screen gestures. For this video, I turned it to the navigation buttons, but let's go to full screen gestures. And let me show you here that you have the option to block gestures with the S Pen. So prevent the S Pen from being used for full screen gestures. This helps when drawing or writing. So I've actually had this problem a lot where I'm drawing and I accidentally swipe back. So you have this option where you can block those gestures so you don't accidentally leave the application. So here you can see that I can't swipe up. So I swipe up with my finger, head into S note, and then let's say I create a new note. If I draw from the side, that doesn't accidentally go back. If I use my finger, then it does go back. So that's really cool that that feature has been added. So those are all the settings of the S Pen. So the last thing I wanna do is show you the AR feature that you can use with the S Pen. So to get to that, I'm just going to head into the camera and then I'm going to select more right here and I'm gonna to go to AR zone. So this has actually now been added to more Samsung phones than just the notes, but right here I have AR Doodle. So with AR Doodle, this allows you to draw something in space and it kind of interacts with it. So let's show you. So this feature allows you to draw something on your face or in um, the room that you're in and kind of do this little 3D thing with it. So here you have the option where you can draw on your face. So let me line up right here 
and I can do some googly eyes and you can make some fun little shapes and that will all match up to your face. So kind of fun little thing that you can do here. There's a lot of different options there, but I like to use a feature where you swipe it around and then it will allow you to doodle in the room that you are in. So let me show you how that works. So it says you need to pan the camera around before doodling. All right, so here you can see in my office, kind of messy right now, but let's go ahead and select a pen. So you can select how thick that pen is, and then you can start doodling. So there I'm doodling, and you can see that's kind of in 3D space as you move around. So then let's go to find this little rainbow pen, which is pretty fun. So how you can use this, if I tap the screen and just draw around, it makes a circle in front of me. But if I tap the screen and then move, it draws in 3D space. So now if I move back, you can see that it has drawn that in 3D space and it even has my other object right there. So let's say I want to draw something on the TV, make this nice little rainbow. Now that's not directly on the TV, in 3D space, I would have to kind of go right up to the TV and put that there, but you can do some really fun little things. Now here I can add um, little things on the TV. So you can make little fun things to walk around. Not super useful, just more fun to have. And then I can create a recording and I can record my little 3D thing and I could create mazes for my kids and all sorts of fun little ideas. And then you can even write text or other things on the screen. There you go, and it put hello. So then I'm going to select done, and now I have my hello there on the screen. So that is the AR Doodle function. And that is pretty much every feature that the S Pen has on your Samsung Galaxy Note 10 Plus. Now there are a few more differences on the Note 20 I'll save for another video. But if you have a way in which you use the S Pen that you absolutely love, please let us know down in the comments below so we can use our S Pens a bit more. I know that my kids love using the coloring feature. I love how easy it is to kind of navigate the screen and makes it easier to touch if your hands are dirty or whatever. It's really nice to have. So if you have any further questions about the Note devices, please let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you on the next one.